Praise the Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord on a Friday night? My, my, my. That was pretty weak. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord on a Friday night? Amen. Amen. So thankful that the Lord has decided to make this place his abode tonight. And I'm thankful for what I feel in this house. And I'm thankful for what the Lord has already done and what he's going to continue to do. Do you have expectation that God's going to do the miraculous in this place tonight? Now, I know, I know when you're the new guy, everybody wants to size you up and figure out, you know, who I am and what I'm all about. But what do you say we just lay all that aside and say, the presence of the Lord is here. Let's just have a move of God. That's all I'm interested in. Is that what you've come desiring tonight? Amen. Amen. You should make your way back to your seats. Truly, what an honor it is to be here. <clears throat> I give honor to the host pastor. Thank you for opening up your church. Aren't you thankful to be a part of what God is doing right here in this wonderful district? Amen. Amen. And I give honor. To Brother Flores, appreciate you, sir. Thank you for allowing me to stand behind this pulpit. And um, looking forward to what the Lord is going to do tonight. I, uh, I don't have uh, a sermon here for you. I do feel like the Lord began to uh, quicken me on a few things in the hotel room and then during the worship service. And so if you came for sermonizing, you might be a little disappointed tonight. But I do feel like I have something to say. And uh, I think before we leave here, that the will of God is going to be done, and that's all I'm interested in. Amen? Amen. I think my wife and daughter, hopefully she's asleep, but my wife is watching. I love her and appreciate her greatest gift outside of the Holy Ghost God has ever given me, and I honor her tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to a familiar passage of Scripture, John chapter 3. We will begin reading at verse number 1. To this wonderful, wonderful music team, this worship team, didn't they do a fantastic job leading us into the presence of God here tonight? Amen. Amen. John chapter 3, verse number 1. If you have it, say amen. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher Come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, he's saying, Listen up, pay attention, look closely. I say unto thee, Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man... Be born when he is old. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, listen, listen, pay attention, pay attention. Look closely. I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit. Somebody shout spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind, everybody shout the wind. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whether it goeth. So is some people that are born of the Spirit. So is a few people that are born of the Spirit. Read it with me. So is... That is born of the Spirit. I want to do my best to preach to you tonight simply on this subject, the revelation of the wind. I am interested in the Spirit of God having free reign and free will in this place tonight. I have not come to do anything but just say, Lord, let your spirit move through this house. Accomplish that which you want to accomplish. Use whomever you want to use to accomplish it. Anoint young people to be used by you tonight. Anoint student pastors to be used by you tonight. Anoint senior pastors to be used by you tonight. Lord, touch every first-time visitor. Touch every person that's had this for a long time, God. God. 
We want the Spirit to move in this place. Come on, I want you to lift your hands and pray like an apostolic in this house. Pray with authority. Pray in the Holy Ghost if you've got it. Hallelujah. Come on, pray out loud. Nobody praying quietly. Lift your hands, close your eyes, and pray right now. Come on, pray a little while longer. I think we can press here for just a minute. Lord, anoint me and use me for the glory of your kingdom. Let your words be my words. Let your ways be my ways. Let your thoughts be my thoughts. Quicken me to do your will and declare the whole counsel of God. Amen. We take dominion over anything that would be a hindrance against this service. We loose the gifts of the Spirit into this atmosphere in Jesus' name. If you believe God's going to do it in this house, why don't you clap your hands and give him a shout? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Throughout Scripture, you will find that the Bible uses something called typology. That is where the Old Testament will use a type of something or an image of something to give you a revelation of what is to come. You find that in the very opening of your Bible, there is a river. That river wove its way through the Garden of Eden, and once it came through the Garden of Eden we learn that it was parted into four heads. When you look at the very last chapter of your Bible, you will also find a river. That river flows from the Lamb. And the Bible says that that river is clear as crystal. And on its banks there are trees that give fruit every single month. There is something to be partaken of off of those trees. As well as in the middle of your Bible, you will find in Ezekiel chapter 47 that there is also a river. Why is the Bible showing us rivers throughout the Bible? Because Jesus teaches us in John chapter 7 that the Spirit of God would be likened unto rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, but Christ had not yet been glorified. And so we understand that as you look at rivers through the Bible, what you are seeing is an image of the Spirit of the living God. That's why Naaman, when he was going to be healed of his leprosy, he could not go into those creeks or rivers that were so Forced from the earth, he calls them Abana and Parfar. Those were earth fed rivers. He had to go to the river Jordan. And the river Jordan finds its source, according to scripture, being a place that is fed not from the earth but from the heavenly. And so we understand that it is from the dew of Mount Hermon or the snow of the snow-capped mountains of Lebanon that you find that the river of Jordan finds its source. That's why for him to get a miracle it mattered what river he came in contact with because it was the river of Jordan that had that typology of the Spirit, and for you to get healed and touched, friend, it matters that you come in contact with a flow that starts from heaven. If you're going to have a miracle in your body, it's got to be a heavenly source. Why rivers? Because rivers were source of life in the Bible days. You had to be close to a river. You had to be close to a water source. And so he likens water unto his spirit because it's showing you and I that the spirit would be something that would be the source of life for you and I. Another type that you find in the Old Testament 
is a rock. We understand that there was a rock that followed Israel, and that rock gave out a river that would water Israel. It is interesting that that rock followed them, and we learn in the New Testament that rock was Christ. That's why when Moses smote the rock twice, he broke type because Christ would not be crucified twice. He would only be crucified once. He would only be smitten once, friend. You have to see that Christ is also likened unto a rock. Why? Because a rock is something firm. A rock is something you can build upon. A rock is something that you can trust as a foundation. And you've got to hear me tonight. Christ wants to be the foundation of which you build your life upon. Christ wants to be the foundation of which you build a marriage upon. Christ wants to be the foundation of which you build your finances upon. Christ wants to be the foundation The Bible teaches us that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But what cannot be shaken? The kingdom of God. Why? Because God in the flesh looked right at Peter and said, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. You want to know why God's going to have a church? Because it's built on a rock. You want to know why this church will never be in trouble? Because it's built on a rock. These types, these, these images, they teach us of things that are to come. You find that it was the rock that Daniel sees that smites the images of the world. He said, I saw a rock cut without hands, and it came down and it smote the images of the world. And the images of the world, the kingdoms of the world, they came down when the rock smote them. You have to see that when you begin to hear Peter preaching one day. And he said, that stone which the builders have rejected has become the the chief cornerstone. Christ was the rock that was cut without hands. He was God manifested in the flesh. He was God all by himself. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The hands of man did not make him. He was God and God became man. My, my, my. And so he teaches us that it was through the work of Christ that he would smite the images of the kingdoms of the world. You have to understand everything that's going on politically, you don't need to worry because we, the apostolic church, have a king that is not Republican or Democrat. We have a king that is not a part of a democracy. We have a king that has been the alpha and he has been the omega. Come on, I know everybody's worried about inflation and everybody's worried about all the... I'm not worried about what happens in the world. I'm worried about my king. And when he parts that eastern sky, I want to be ready for the king of kings. Woo! My, my, my. And so you see the rock, that imagery of the rock, it's important. But the wind, it's so important. Jesus looks right at Nicodemus and he says, the only thing I really know how to liken my spirit unto is the wind. He says, it's, it's like the wind. The wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. When you get born of the Spirit, something begins to move in your life. It is the Spirit of the living God. The wind begins to blow. That word wind is pneuma. It literally means spirit. The Spirit begins to blow. And the Bible teaches us that there would be a sound that would testify that the Spirit is moving. And that word sound is phone. It's where you and I get the word phonics from or language from. He said when the wind begins to blow, there will be a language that testifies that the wind has filled the house. I've had people ask me, why do you have to speak in tongues? The tongue is not the Holy Ghost. The tongue is the sign that the wind has made residency in your house. You want to know why you got to speak in tongues? Because when the Holy Ghost begins to blow, there is a language that testifies God has filled this empty vessel. 
No wonder when my daughter was born, I knew I knew she was born, but they did not call her alive until they heard the sound of life. There had to be a cry. There had to be a, a sound that came out, and they said, now she is born at 2.20 p.m. because a sound came out of her that marked life. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you better believe there is a sound that comes out of you that says, I've got life and life more abundantly. I've got the Holy Ghost uh, and let me tell you something uh, I've had it for 22 years uh, and it's still not old uh, and it's still the great anybody thankful to be Holy Ghost filled in this house yeah. Woo. someone shout the wind wind it's the spirit of God it is it is that spirit that begins to move it was the wind that God sent when he wanted to part the Red Sea so that Moses and the Israelites could walk across on dry ground. Uh, he was trying to show you that when you need a way where there is no way, it's going to take the wind. It was the wind, the wind that worked all throughout the Old Testament. It was the wind. And all of this was teaching us uh, of the ways of the operation of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I began to look at the wind not too long ago. And I learned this is what wind is. Uh, because, because it's very interesting to me that, that wind is, is merely two pressure systems. If it is an earthly pressure system being met by a heavenly pressure system. And when the heating of the earth gets uneven, uh, there is a cooling from heaven uh, that meets it. And when it happens, it causes the wind to blow. But the earth begot, has got to release this pressure before the wind can blow and cause the pressure from heaven to meet it. And those uneven pressures uh, is what causes the wind to begin to move uh, just as we feel it. I know you all know a little something about wind here. It, it, in, in this state, right? You have to understand all that is is two pressures meeting in the atmosphere. You got to understand when you want the wind of God to blow, you've just got to heat things up on the earth. You didn't hear what I just said. When you need the wind of God to blow in your life, when everything is going wrong, when you feel like you're all alone in your home, when you feel like you're fighting an uphill battle, you know what you have to do? You've got to learn how to heat things up in your spirit. That's why he made it very clear. I will spew lukewarmness out. Why? Because God's not interested in something being cool. He likes it to be on fire. That's why he said when it's showed up on the day of Pentecost. It didn't show up like any other means but Holy Ghost and he said it's got to get hot. There's got to be a pressure system. There's got to be somebody that says uh, I'm ready to heat things up. Why? I want the wind of God to blow through this house. You want to know why we begin to feel the wind of the Holy Ghost move through this place uh, when we were singing and worshiping the Lord? Because our spirit uh, began to heat up the atmosphere uh, and a pressure began to move in this house and heaven cannot ignore it and there will always be a wind that blows uh, when earth begins to heat up. Uh, As you continue to look at the wind, stay with me just for a little bit, you'll find that there are two types of wind. There is local winds and there are global winds. Is this all right tonight? I begin to look at these types of winds. You'll find that there are six wind belts that come across the world. Seven global winds if you include jet streams. Not too long ago, I was talking to an elder in my life and he told me that there was an old prophet that said in prayer one day, he was praying and the Lord spoke to him and he said that there were seven princes in this world. Don't miss that. There are seven princes of darkness working against revival in this world. And as I was studying these things about global winds, I could not help but find it interesting that there are seven global winds and that prophet of God saw seven princes in the world. I can't help but in my heart begin to think about that for every prince that wants to withhold revival, God has a global wind of revival that's going to blow across this world, that's going to dismantle and dismember every prince 
prince that would try to stop a, a harvest that would sweep across uh, this entire world. Friend, you've got to understand uh, that when God says it's time, uh, it's time. Uh, that when God says it's time for there to be a globe. But the wind can't blow unless the earth says, I'm ready to heat things up down here. If you think you're going to have revival, praying how you've always prayed, you're crazy. If you think you're going to have a personal breakthrough, fasting and seeking like you always, my, my, my. That fell about right there. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to send global winds across this world, but he's looking for conduits of the wind. My, my, my. Woo. Don't miss now that there are local winds. I'm going to slow down just for a second. Local winds. I begin to look at that. What, what, what causes the difference in local winds? As I begin to look at that and study about the winds, I learned that it is the topography of the land that dictates how the wind is going to move through an area. For instance... Where my in-laws are from, they have a lot of mountains there. And so they have wind breaks. Stuff that the wind can't get through. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. They have, they have things, the, the, the characteristics in, in certain cities. You will find that, that there, are, there are tall skyscrapers. And, and whether you realize it or not, those skyscrapers, they begin to make up the topography or the characteristics of that city. And it causes breaks that the wind can't blow through. And so every location has a unique way that the wind moves through a region. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Every, every location has unique ways that the wind works through it. The wind doesn't blow here in South Dakota like it does where I live in Florida. And the wind doesn't blow in Florida like it does where somebody in Missouri lives or somebody in California lives. According to the region that you are in, the wind operates differently. I, I, I want to make myself plain and clear here today because I'm talking about the Spirit of God. That's why you can't copy and paste the way one church has revival exactly and try to say that's how we're going to have revival. You can't copy and paste how one youth group has revival and say that's how all youth groups are going to have revival. Now there are principles that bring the wind. If you pray, if you fast, if if you read the word, if you're in unity, the wind shows up. But you have to understand, for there to be a wind that will come across a region, a man has to find himself in a position of prayer and say, God, how do you want the wind to flow through here? And then you have to allow yourself to be a conduit for the wind to work across your region. What am I trying to say? say uh, on a Friday night to a young man uh, and a young lady, God uh, wants to send a wind uh, across your city. Uh, God uh, wants to send a wind. Uh, God wants to send a wind. God wants to send. But you've got to figure out, God, uh, how am I going to be used by the Spirit? You've got to allow God to show you. You've got to allow God to speak to you. And then when the wind begins to blow, you've got to be led by it. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You've got to be led by it. You've got to let the wind take control. You've got to let the wind do what the wind was always meant to do. You've got to quit trying to figure out, well, I know that's how they did it in that city, so I'm going to have revival like that here. You want to know why you're wearing yourself out? Because you're trying to do it the way it worked there. And God's been trying to speak. This is how I want the wind to work here. Lift your hands and lift your voices right now and call upon the name of the Lord. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Come on, pray for just a minute. 
Pray like you know how to pray. Pray like you want the wind to move in this house. Pray like you want the wind to work like it has not worked before. Pray like you desire for there to be a revelation of the wind you've never had before. My, 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 my. I was sitting right there and I began to think about stories where the wind was working. I couldn't help but think about in the book of Matthew chapter 14. After he had fed the multitude, he sends his disciples into a boat. And he tells them, go to the other side. They had the command of movement. Forward progression. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. They had the command of going forward. But then a phrase comes in. But the wind was contrary to them. Was it a demonic wind? No. It wasn't a demonic wind. The Bible says they were rowing. So as the wind began to work against them, they began to feel the fatigue in their arms. Trying to get a touch from God. Trying to get a breakthrough. Trying to get where God told me I was supposed to go. Trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Man, I feel like I'm ministering to somebody right now. I'm talking to a young man. I'm talking to somebody in this house. I'm talking to a young lady. I'm preaching to somebody in this place right now. You feel your arms are weary in the in the constant rowing and you feel like the wind is against you you feel like the opposition and you have even uh, you have rebuked it you have asked it to stop everything else and little did you know that it was a holding place for a divine encounter God help me right now had the wind not have been contrary they would have missed what was walking to them had the wind not have been contrary, they would have missed a divine encounter and a revelation from Jesus that they did not have before. But because the wind was holding them in place and although they felt like they weren't getting any momentum going forward, then comes something walking on the water. I'm telling you what I feel. I feel like Jesus is about to walk in this house tonight. I feel like God is about to step into this place and say, I know you've been weary and well-doing, but because you faint not, I feel a due season in the atmosphere. I feel like I've got a touch of prophecy on me right now. I feel Jesus uh, is about to step in the house uh, and tell you, I know you've been rowing uh, and you're weary, uh, but the wind was holding you for an encounter. Lift your hands and let's talk to the Lord just for a little bit. Come on, everybody, under the sound of my voice. Lift your hands and lift your voices. Lift your hands and lift your voices. I find it interesting that as the wind was working against them, and, and you know the story, Peter gets out and he walks on water and it's an amazing moment. And then his eyes get off of Jesus. And once his eyes get off of Jesus, he begins to sink. All of that's great, but let's, let's focus on what I'm feeling right here. And Jesus gets in the boat and, and it's just peace and, and, and be still. And the wind and the wave, they, they obey and they calm. It settles. Settles, the Bible says they begin to worship him. And out of nowhere, while they were worshiping him, whether another wind began to blow or by divine providence, it says, and they were on the other side. They got where they were trying to go when they quit trying to fight the wind and just begin to worship. 
when they quit trying to war against what was holding them in place until a divine encounter showed up and gave them a revelation. The Bible says uh, they called him the son of God in that moment. They began to worship him for who he was. And it was that divine encounter where the wind was holding them in place where they just began to worship. And then out of nowhere, they and I, I, this is my personal opinion, is while they were worshiping, the wind shift from contrary to help. And that which was holding them was no longer holding them. It got behind them and began to push them uh, where God intended for them to go anyways. I know you thought you were going to get there by your rowing. Uh, I know you thought you were going to get there by the muscles uh, that you got in the natural. But what God was trying to show you is I'm taking you somewhere you can't get by your own means uh, or by your own strength. Because it's not by my might uh, and it's not by my power, but it's by the spirit my 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 saith the Lord God I was somebody in this place uh, that's been fighting the good fight somebody that's been in the struggle somebody that's been feeling alone and isolated somebody that's been feeling the fight in your spirit you would realize God's just been waiting on me to say I'm done fighting uh, what you sent uh, to bring me to a point of encounter Lift your hands and let's have an encounter with the Holy Ghost right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Uh, listen, I'm almost done. And whenever you feel like the wind is ready for you to move, you just move. That, this, this is how, can we just agree with that tonight? I'm not worried about having a fancy sermon and saying, now you can come to the altar and let's have a moment. There's nothing wrong with it. That's not what I'm worried about tonight. This is a moment with the wind. I begin to think about David when he was fighting the Philistines. And the first fight, the first one, God let him fight by his own strength. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The Lord let him draw his sword and get out in the middle of the valley. And they were just having a good fight, man. They're, and they put a whipping on the Philistines. I mean, yeah. just a first-class whipping. Yeah. Yeah. One of the good ones, you know. And the Bible says the Philistines, they're running away. And while they're running away, they leave their idols and they leave their images and they leave their gods. And the fight that they could fight by their strength, it removed what was surface level. Oh, help me right now. <laughs> it took care of what was on the surface. And David said, this is what we'll do. We're going to light a fire. We're going to burn them. We're just going to take care of all of it. Get, get rid of all of the images. Everything, everything that is contrary to who our God is, get rid of it. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel divine direction. People have come through here and they have taught you and they have preached to you and they have declared to you holiness and separation and you have done it and it has been right and what the Lord has asked of you, it has been in his will and you have obeyed and it has been burnt with fire. But the second fight cannot happen by your own strength because the Philistines came back again but this time they encamped in the valley of Rephaim, the Bible says. And when I studied that word Rephaim, I learned that it literally means deep or mysterious. The unknown thing. The thing that it's just like, I don't know what it is, but it just is. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I don't know how to describe what I'm feeling but I can just tell you that I'm feeling a struggle. 
I don't know how to describe what I'm fighting against, but I'm feeling a fight in my spirit. I don't know how to tell you, preacher, what I'm battling in my mind, what I'm battling in my emotions, uh, what I'm battling at home, what I'm battling on the job, what I'm battling amongst my family. You're warring against family things. You're war all of it, and it's a deep thing. It's a deep-rooted emotional thing. It's a deep. You don't know how to put your finger. You just say it's deep. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And David inquires of the Lord. Let me tell you how you're going to get your answer. The Lord. He puts his face in the carpet and he says, God, what do I do? He says, David, set an encampment around them. Just, just position yourself correctly. Because positioning matters. Put the right pieces into the placement. Get everything set up. Put the systems where they need to go. Get strategy. Do what God needs you to do. And then wait. What am I waiting on? There's going to be a sound in the top of the mulberry tree. A sound? Yeah, a sound. What's the sound? It's the wind. Shatayala bohosha. And when you hear the sound of going, then you know the Lord has gone before you. And now the Lord is fighting where you could not fight. And the Lord is taking territory where you could not take territory. The Lord is stepping into places you could not step. And he's doing things you cannot do. And he's working on things you cannot work on. And he's mending things you could not mend. And he's orchestrating things you cannot orchestrate. He's in the deep place uh, working on the mysterious things, things you can't handle on your own. God help you. Preacher, what are you doing? I, I felt like I just heard a sound of going come into this house. And he said, when you hear the sound of going, no God's going where you can't go. And he's fighting, my God. Do you hear that sound in the heaven? It's the revelation of the wind. It's not by my might. And it's not by my power. I hear the sound of going over this district right now. I hear the sound of going. I hear it, I hear it. Lift your hands all over this house. Lift your voice and let it go. Yeah. 